What is up, beautiful light beings? I'm back. Look at this. Two videos in a week. Crazy. <laughs> this video won't be that long. Um, just jumping on today to talk a little bit about authenticity because it seems to be a theme. Um, well, it's kind of the whole theme of this entire evolutionary journey in my perspective, but it's been a very common theme coming up in a lot of um, sessions with clients, especially coaching. Um, authenticity, like what does it even mean? What does it even mean to be authentic, right? And so first I wanna start off with what does it mean to be programmed, right? Because um, if we're in a human avatar, a human skin suit, human body, we've all been programmed, right? If you've listened to anything else I've posted or read any of my posts online, you know that I talk about that a lot, about the programming, the programming, the programming, the programming of the 3D matrix, right? We've legitimately all been programmed, meaning we have been fed narratives, paradigms, beliefs, thoughts from all sorts of external sources, and then we've attached to them and created them as a reality. So... It's neither good nor bad that we've been programmed. It's literally just like a fact of this human life, right? Um, so one of the first things we have to be authentic about, get real with ourselves about, is the fact that if we're walking around in a human body, we have to acknowledge we've all been programmed, right? That is literally the first step of being able to break free from the endless amounts of programs that we're under. It's wild when you really start... Um, diving in and pulling these like layers back right of all these programs their their beliefs that came from someone and something else that we were told it's true and so then we believe it to be true and that's literally how energy gets manifested into the physical realm so again if you've listened to anything else i've talked about you know i talk about how the media programs us mainstream media social media all media all media is programming to us, whether it's mainstream, whether it is the dark net, right? Like it's all information coming from somewhere other than inside of us that we're, we're being fed, right? We're either listening to it, we're watching it, we're reading it. However, we're taking it in, our subconscious mind is taking it all in and formulating its own beliefs and perspectives based on how our life has been, right? We literally only view life based of our based off of our internal experiences. It's all we know, right? We know what other people teach us. Again, that's what I'm going back to, the programming. But then we filter all of that information based on how we have navigated life, how life has showed up or not showed up for us kind of thing, right? That's literally how we are dissecting all of this information. And there's a plethora of it out there, right? We live in this time of um, easily accessible information, which is, I mean, like everything, there's a duality to that. There's good and bad to that. Um, we've never had so much information literally at our fingertips, but at the same time, that can also be um, challenging to discern all of this information, right? Especially when we're starting to quote unquote, wake up, remember that the narratives, the programming of the 3D matrix is not all there is, right? It's a reality, one reality. Well, it's multiple realities in one dimension. Um, so to be authentic, first of all, you know, like I, again, I work with different genders, different ages, different everything, walks of life, right? And for the most part, we all, believe ourselves or perceive ourselves to being real but my question to you is if we're simultaneously acknowledging that we're all programmed brainwashed brainwashed um conditioned another nicer word they're all the same thing right but if we're simultaneously acknowledging that we have been heavily programmed by all of these external beliefs systems then how real are we actually being to our authentic self? How real are we really being? 
Are we being real to the program, that default program that's running in the background all the time in our heads? Is that what we're really being real to, true to, loyal to? Or are we actually being authentic and true to ourselves, right? And so this, this brings in my sort of perspective of what authenticity means, right? It literally just means in my perspective, being real about how we feel and what we think in each now moment. That's pretty much the stupid, simple, summed up version of, of authenticity, of truth, of realness. It's this ability to openly express, right? And I do feel like, you know, depending on, and again, we shift, our moods shift every single day, every every few minutes, right? Because it's all energy moving through us. So our moods are always shifting. Perspectives are shifting. Beliefs are shifting. Um, so... To me, like being authentic as I'm as I'm learning what that really means to me, because I first had to learn how inauthentic I've been my whole life. I had to first really get real with myself about that and see where I have held back my truths, my perspective, my emotions, especially out of fear of how it's received and perceived by the world around me basically what it comes down to and on some level we're all doing this right then you look at all the different roles we play based on all of the labels we identify with we're a husband we're a wife we're a sister we're a brother we're a child we're a parent we're a plethora of different professions and that to me is one of the most um disempowering identifications the majority of us make about who we are we believe we're our profession Again, programming of this 3D matrix. So it's like when you start to realize, holy shit, I have a lot of labels that I have falsely identified with, right? I just had to pause for a second because I had a phone call. Um, I think I semi-remember what I was saying. So we have all these labels, right, that we falsely identify with. Nonetheless, we identify with them. We believe that that is who we are, blah, 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 blah. But all of those roles also have like a programming to them based on societal conditioning. So when you start to really like reflect on that in your life and, oh my God, A, all the roles I play in, every, in everybody else's world and my own, do I show up the same in all those roles or do I tweak how I show up? Do I maybe tweak how I say things in this um, with this audience? Do I not say things in this audience, right? Do I show certain emotions with this person, but not that person, right? And this is just like, I'm just really giving an example of how you can start really like observing yourself and your your human behavior. That's really what this is. We, we be becoming the observer is just observing our human behaviors and our patterns that again, come from our conditioning and programming. So it's not to judge them. It's not to shame them. It's not to sit there and go, oh my God, something's wrong with me. Or No, well, like, again, we've all chosen to jump into the skin suit, experience the human journey. And with that humanness comes all this humanness, right? So being authentic people is really just being real about what you're feeling, what you're thinking, in each now moment. Now, again, I feel like depending on, and I think this is what I was about to say, like whatever mood we're in, whatever energy we're re that's most predominant in our awareness as we're going through our day to day and having certain energetic exchanges with people and conversations and um, experiences, right? Our realness is not always going to be the same thing. Does that make sense, right? Like, because if we identify with the fact that while we're in a human body, we have a plethora of thoughts and a plethora of emotions that are constantly moving through us, right? They're constantly moving through us. It is energy, energy, emotions, energy, emotion. So with that said, if we're being real about how we feel or what we're thinking in a particular now moment, 20 minutes later, 
we may be feeling something completely different, thinking something completely different, but are we expressing it? That's really what it comes down to. Are we expressing it in a way that um, we're speaking our truth, right? But here's the other thing about authenticity, at least I, I've, I feel. The more I allow myself to just be real and, and who I feel I am today, tomorrow, the more I also just like, quote unquote, allow others to be their own unique expression of self, right? There's no, like, there's so much less triggering that I find that comes up for me when I'm really in my truth, because it's like, I, authenticity doesn't have anything to prove to people. It's just, it's just, you're being authentic, right? You are the proof. You just are existing in your highest vibration at that moment, whatever that is. You're expressing it. You're not afraid to share it. You're, you're vulnerable, right? You're not um, toning yourself down. You're not calm, calming down when you're fired up about something. There's a lot to be fired up about right now in this world, right? There is a shitload to be fired up. But, you know, again, for me, like when those moments of fury or rage surface, old me tried to hide that from myself. Never mind everybody else. Of course, if I'm hiding it from myself, of course I'm hiding it from everybody else. But it was like I, I was trying to convince myself I didn't feel certain ways or I didn't think certain things. But then the more you realize that we're not, literally not our emotions and our thoughts, we just kind of allow them to cycle through and to move through because we recognize, oh my God, I'm not this nasty thought I'm having right now. I'm not this nasty emotion. These are byproducts of my experience in this human journey. So the more you can like kind of just get to another layer of acceptance with that, I, I feel like the less there's this need to change it or deny what we're thinking and feeling, right? We live in a very loud society. A lot of our thoughts are not, didn't originate from us. Same thing with the emotions. And so when you just start to realize, oh, it's just a thought, it's just an emotion. What is it telling me, right? Let me not ignore it. There's a reason it keeps coming up. So let me like talk about it. Let me talk it out with somebody. Let me fucking be real about how I feel. Right. One of one of like the things that is so triggering to me, and it's because I did it for so much of my life. And that's why it's there. So there's still a part of me probably judging that aspect, that trait. But that it's like nails on the chalkboard. When I, when I ask someone or someone asks me and I know I'm not okay, how are you doing today? Good, I'm fine, I'm good, I'm fine. That is like, it's nails on a chalkboard to me because I read freaking energy, right? So when people give me that half-assed, I'm good, it's all good, everything's good. And like, it's not, that is so because it's a lie, you know, and, and I had a conversation with a client today in one of our sessions about lying and how it's triggering to us. Well, she, she brought it up and said that lying triggers the crap, like when she's lied to it really triggers her. I said, well, it's triggering to all of us. Right. But here's the root of why I, I believe that. Have we been lied to by the system? Mm -hmm. That's one of the hardest pills to swallow, if you will when we start remembering all that. But it's deeper than that. It goes beyond being lied to by someone or something outside of us. It's the lies that our conditioned egoic mind has been telling ourselves our entire lives to keep us comfortable, to keep us safe, right? To keep us really stuck in old patterns and old paradigms. But nonetheless, the ego thinks it's protecting and it thinks it's keeping the human safe from feeling all of those uncomfortable shitty emotions and thinking all of those morbid thoughts, right? So it, it's it's so intelligent, our, our conditioned mind. It's so intelligent, but it's so conditioned to be that way. It's so conditioned to be deceiving, to be honest. It is. So even when we think we're being real with ourselves and we're being true, we're not. Because this goes back to how I started this video. 
if we think we're being real and authentic, but simultaneously realizing how programmed we are, then how real and authentic are we actually being to our truest aspect of ourself? Probably not that real. We're still playing some default program and being real to that, being loyal to that program because it's what we know. It's what the body knows. It's what the mind knows. It's what we know. So it's quote unquote comfortable, even if it's keeping us in the most insane amount of suffering and pain and disease. <laughs> I, I do find human behavior to be very um, interesting. It really is very, it's, it's interesting to me when I really start to like observe it and, and see like, wow, you know, yes, we are all different, but wow, we're not so different wow, we're all walking around with so much of the same junk, baggage, garbage, right? Um, so to me, being real, to be real, you got to feel. Just like I say, to heal, you got to feel. Because guess what? That is what sets the human experience apart from all of these other incarnations that we could have, that we do have in other realms that is not in the human body, but all these other crazy cool bodies that we jump into the human it is the emotion that sets humanity apart but yet i think i said it in my last video we we don't like uncomfortable emotions a lot of us don't even like happy emotions it's wild we only let ourselves feel them to like the, the tiniest degree because there's a fear underlying that that's that's afraid that it's going to rip that happy emotion away so I better not feel it too much because it's going to be gone right it's going to be fleeting so I, I just find human behavior very interesting and unique in that here I, I know this I know this concept from a spiritual experience experiences that we come down to experience to learn through human behavior to learn through human emotion and then when we are the human in the emotions, we are literally trying everything possible to escape and numb out the emotion or the thought that's unpleasant, that we don't want to, we don't want to think about that. We don't want to talk about the elephant in the room, even though we all fucking know the elephant is in the fucking room. <laughs> it's been fucking staring at us, but nobody fucking wants to talk about it. Because once we express, apparently in our human mind, we think that that makes it more real. And it doesn't. It's the same thing with what's going on really like a, everywhere, right? All this awareness that's coming out, people talking, sharing, blah, 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 blah. It's like, whoa, it's great, but it's also, whoa. <laughs> it's it's a beautiful thing to see people's throat chakras like opening up and sharing and expressing. But like, whoa, <laughs> it's like also watching thousands and thousands of eons of having our throat chakra suppressed and this is what happens when like we open it right it's like whoa there is so much spreading of information at this point uh, it's it's a lot it's a lot for any of us to take that in and be able to then sit with and discern all of this information because it is constantly being pumped from everywhere every, everywhere everywhere so Again, being real. Right now, I'm being real with, with you in this video. I am having a conversation on Zoom with myself, knowing that other people are going to watch it, but I'm having it in the same way that I would have with my best friend or when I have it with just myself and my dogs. Like I'm literally expressing the most realness I can bring to you at this now moment in my current reality. I got no makeup on. I didn't do my hair. I didn't get all dolled up to jump on camera because people might see me. I literally just rolled up, showed up how I'm walking around my house today, right? That's a, to me, that's another expression of being real. I'm not trying to be something I'm not. I'm not um, hiding that I go through all my human shit just because I'm quote unquote spiritual. I mean, quite honestly, the more quote unquote spiritual you become, 
the more you can't hide your humanness. You can't hide from your humanness and you can't hide your humanness. Wow, that is a brilliant thing that just dropped in. Love it. It's so true though. The more spiritual we become as individuals, which really just means the more we connect with our spirit, our soul, our light body, the more we cannot hide our humanness. Do you understand that? It is our humanness we have been running from since we entered the human game. But it is the spirit that wanted to enter the human game and learn through human emotions. So the spirit actually embraces the duality of all of these experiences. When I go through like big, big purges, we'll say, sh energy shifts of shadow work, whatever the F you want to call it, when I go through my shit, right, and feel it, I've always been a feeler my whole life, but I've done a great job at numbing it out to some degree, which again, only made my entire body super sick and my mind. But nonetheless, here I am thankful that I started to see that. But it's like the more I allow myself to feel those towering moments of like despair and I can't fucking do this human journey anymore kind of thing, right? We've all been there. The more I hear my spirit, my soul, my higher self come in and say, this is what living is. You're getting to experience the highs and the lows, the goods and the bads. You would not know what one is without the other. This is the gift of life. Grieving is a gift. It feels horrible and painful when we go through it. But it's also simultaneously a gift. So simultaneously, we're learning to be real while also recognizing, holy fuck, I have all these programs that are so fake, that are not who I am at my core. So I have to keep identifying them and where they're showing up in my life to be able to then consciously choose, do I still want to attach to that label? Do I still want to play that role? Do I want to be that character today? Or do I just want to fucking be me? And however me needs to show up in every now moment. My me shifts throughout the day. I could wake up in a great mood. Something could trigger me. I could be in a shitty mood for an hour. And then I could be great. <laughs> right? And so depending on who you are and what time you ask me, you're going to get a different real version of me. Right? I no longer sit there and go, everything's great when everything's not great. Perfect example. My mom lives on the other side of the map. She does not see you physically, mentally, emotionally. She doesn't see what I go through while I'm going through my, my shifts, my purges, my shadow work. She doesn't see it. She's not here. She doesn't know. When we connect, when she comes out here and visits for her, like usually she comes out for two weeks. I am very real with her about what I go through because I am done trying to hide certain aspects of my life to certain people because it might make them uncomfortable because then they might worry about me because, because, because they might not understand because they might want to fix me because all these narratives, all these fears that are holding me back from being real are literally causing me to betray myself, my authenticity. So I tell her when she comes out, I go, mom, you know, sometimes I'm great. Sometimes I have months where like everything is just like soaring, right? Kind of just going through life, flowing. And then boom, something happens that creates a triggering effect that creates epiphanies and memories and, and all sorts of stuff that then I got to go feel my shit again. And sometimes I can feel it in an hour, a day, a week, a month, a couple of months, right? It shifts. But I've learned like the more I'm real about that with her and I share that with her and I do the exact same thing with my clients. And I honestly think that that is what has helped me create such deep and meaningful relationships with all of my coaching clients because I'm fucking real about what I go through. 
I don't want them coming to me thinking I'm their spiritual guru or their life guru and that I have all their answers. Yo, I'm I'm riding this crazy ass train right next to you and I'm figuring it out as I go as well. But what I can do is I can share with you what I've learned that helps me and what hasn't helped me. And you can take, you can pick and choose from that what you want, right? And make it your own, create your own. But don't think for one minute that I have all my ducks in a row. <laughs> my ducks, my pigeons, my geese, my my um, whatever, seagulls, they're fucking all over the place, but I'm cool with that. I know that's life, right? Like this, like that, that sort of type A. And I feel like for me, like, I never really fully identified with being a type A personality, but I know where my type A qualities were very predominant, we'll say very dominant, like as a nurse, yep, type A. When I clean, type A. There's certain things and it's like, yeah, type A. Well, there's a type, there's that type A personality trait or whatever. Um, but it's like all of that needs to be perfect in a certain way is exhausting because that's how I've lived so much of my life is trying to fit everybody else's mold of whatever their perspective of perfection is. And let me tell you, we all have a very different lens, again, that we're looking through. So why are we all still trying to be validated by everybody? Why is it so important to be heard and seen by everybody else? Why? I'll tell you, because we haven't heard or seen ourselves for most of our life. So what do we do? We seek it externally. We want to be seen. And this was something that came up in my conversation today in coaching about wanting to be seen by another individual the way that we see ourselves. And I, I, I felt that when she said that to me. She feels that someone in her life doesn't see her the way she sees her. And I remember starting to feel that way too as I started to see myself. It was like all of a sudden I started seeing me in this new light and recognizing who didn't see that because they're still trying to see themselves, right? And so that's, that's as, as humans, we're all, every single one of us is on some level seeking an external validation or approval or acceptance, whatever word. They're all, to me, the same thing. It's a validation. It's a, it's a, yes, I, yes, I see you. Yes, I hear you. Yes, I feel you, right? Like we are all seeking that because the programming in us has literally caused us to not see and hear ourselves. We don't. I'll tell you, you'll be watching this and your ego will be sitting there right now. There's a lot of people that will listen to this and your ego right now is saying, I, I see myself. I know how I am. I, I I know me, right? Okay, great. But what me is it? Is it the programmed me? Is it the me still stuck in a lot of unconscious fear and trauma? Or is it the me that's willing to show up vulnerably and honestly and say, yo, today I'm having a shit fucking day. I'm not good today. Perfect example I can give. Last week, I woke up one day, high anxiety in my body. I might have said it in the last video. Don't know why I had it. There was no external trigger. There was nothing that happened with me and another person to cause it. There was, there was no, quote unquote, rhyme or reason for the analytical mind for Maria to have woken up with this body ridden with anxiety. Right? Now, old me would have if my husband asked me like you know how are you this morning old me would have been like I'm fine meanwhile inside like you know my stomach is twisting and knots and I can feel my heart palpitating like whatever right but old me would have absolutely been like oh I'm good I'm fine I'm good you know those nails on the chalkboard yeah because it's my voice that I hear <laughs> that's why <laughs> that's why it's triggering to me when I when people respond that way when I know like clearly they're not good 
it's because I can hear me doing that for so long. So old me would have been like, oh, I'm fine. No, I was like, fuck that. I don't care if he wants to try to fix me, try to make my anxiety go away. Cause it's usually what happens as individuals. Like if we're emotionally not in a good space, right? Usually the other person wants to try to fix it. We usually want to try to um, get somebody out of that emotional state some way, shape or form. Cause it's uncomfortable for us when people are feeling uncomfortable emotions. Why? Um, again, cause we haven't allowed ourselves to sit with our own uncomfortable emotions. So that when other people express it, we don't, we don't know how to hold that space to show up. Right. So there's a fear in me. Like, Oh, if I, if I share what I'm feeling right now, an old belief comes in that I'm too emotional, too sensitive, too dramatic, to to all these things that have been an old narrative in my reality starts to creep in right so when he asked me like you know how are you this morning like you know I don't know why but I have like so much anxiety in my body and I'm only telling you because you asked me how I am not telling you because you need to fix it or we need to figure it out I don't even need to figure it out I just know I have a lot of anxiety in my body right now so I'm gonna work I'm gonna work with it and allow it to move through me right? That's a perfect example of me like showing up in, in, an, in an authentic way that old me wouldn't have. That That's literally being authentic. That's being real. That's literally saying, oh, you're asking me right now how I am. Do you legitimately want to know? Because <laughs> uh, I'm not really that good right now, right? So just pay attention. Where are you not being authentic? Where are you watering yourself down? Where are you holding back an emotion or a thought because you're afraid of how somebody else is going to receive it or perceive it? Or or are you going to be judged for it? Or are you going to be shamed for it, right? Because all of us have been shamed and judged and ridiculed and like, hello, we're all victims. Like, we're all victims. So if we're all victims, are any of us really victims? I mean, again, it's all perspective, but we're all victims of the same shit. So we can either choose as individuals to continue to stay in that victimized mindset. Because let me tell you, the ego is very, very comfortable in it. I I guarantee you the ego is coming up with a million ways of as to why just stay in your old patterns. That's what it's telling you. That's what it tells me all the fucking time. You don't really want to say that. You don't really want to be honest right now, do you? right? But it's like, hello, that's why lying is such a trigger to us. That is why when we wake up to the lies of the external matrix, a lot of us get really fucking angry, really fucking angry. Because A, we feel like, oh my God, I was stupid. I was duped. We've all been duped. Holy shit. How did I not see that, right? So there's that part of us judging ourselves. But it's deeper than that, my friends. It's because that part of us knows we have literally been lying to ourselves our entire lives because it's what we have been taught to do. We're not taught as kids, oh, express your emotions. Please share them, especially unpleasant ones. Please throw your temper tantrum right now. But tell me, what is causing the tantrum? What is causing this, right? No, we're put in timeout. We're punished. We're given candy. We're given all these things to what? Oh, distract and numb. Oh, so then when we're adults, what do we do? We distract and numb. Distract and numb, distract and numb, distract and numb. And then we deny. We deny everything we're thinking and everything we're feeling. And guess what? Those thoughts and those emotions are going to get louder and louder and louder the more we deny them. Just like the external matrix is just going to get louder and louder and louder until, hello, oh my God, the pandemic was a pandemic and we're about to to ride the same crazy training? Fuck, that's wild. Look at us, look at us humans, still duped, (laughs) right? So my friends, being real, you got to feel. To heal, you got to feel. So yes, really, the premise of all of it is feeling. That, that That is the irony of this entire earth game. It's feeling. That that's, that's 
that's the answer to all of it. We say love is the answer. Guess what? We do not know what the F love is if we do not allow ourselves to feel everything that we perceive love not to be. Do you understand that? Because that was a pretty profound thing that just dropped in. We cannot understand the energy of love if we have not allowed ourselves to feel everything that is the polarity of love. So everything that's fear-based. You have to feel your fears. You have to acknowledge your fears and your insecurities and your attachments. You have to, if you want to break free from them. If you want to stay controlled by them, by all means, you have free will. We have free will. And we can stay in those states of suffering and eventually create physical disease in our body if that's what we want. We're godly beings. We can choose that. Many of us have many lifetimes, myself included, right? For me, I'm kind of like in this lifetime, don't really want to do that anymore. For me, I kind of want to see how much I can wake up to my divinity, my authenticity, while I'm still in an avatar that I know is programmed. To me, that's like what my, you know, people, what's your purpose? What's your mission? I, I Legitimately, like, I just want to remember my divinity while I'm still in a body and in a earthly game that has taught me the complete opposite of that. What better place to remember that than the place that's telling you the complete opposite and teaching you the complete opposite and expressing an energy that is, quote unquote, the complete opposite of love, meaning fear, right? So to be authentic, first, we have to acknowledge we're programmed. I don't care how old you are, how young you are, what color you are, what gender you identify with. I don't care what labels you're attached to, because guess what? They're all part of your programs. They're all part of your false identities. They're all part of your suffering. And they are all part of your non-authenticity, okay? So I'm not saying that to be a daughter, to be a wife, to be a friend, to be a coach, to be all these things, I can't be authentic. Oh, hells to the no. It's about being authentic in all those roles. So like when my mom asks how life is going and I'm like, life is a fucking shit show right now, mom, but I'm going to be okay. And that's not bullshit. I know I am. But yeah, I'm, I'm glad you're asking because right now it's it ain't good. <laughs> Do you want to know why? I mean, I can tell you. You don't want to know. That's cool too. I'm cool. I'm cool with sharing whatever the person that's asking me wants to receive, right? I'm fine with just answering I'm not okay right now. It doesn't have to go any further than that. If the person asking me needs that, needs more, then I'll, I'll give it because I'm going to be fucking real about what I'm thinking, feeling, and going through. But I also, to me, that's knowing your audience, right? How do we, how do we quote unquote, know our audience, but still be real, right? Because that there, that's a, that's a narrative. That's a, um, that's a phrase I hear all the time. Know your audience, know your audience. Mm, I pretty much know my audience because my audience is all versions of me, right? But what does that mean, know your audience? Does that mean we water ourselves down based on who's in front of us? Or do we, and I don't want to use the word filter because that, that in a way I feel like that's that's like holding certain things back. But are we mindful? Are we conscious of how we deliver the information? Yeah, to me, to me, that's knowing my audience. It's still delivering the same information, but I guess delivering it in a digestible way based on what I'm perceiving their state of awareness to be. That's knowing my audience. But that doesn't mean that I hold back my truth about how I feel about certain things and, and what I what I see to be truth, right? All this shit that's going on right now. First of all, I'm not a political person. I think I said this in my last thing. Anything I post, if people are perceiving it as a political post, it's because that is their state of awareness. They still live in the illusion of p politics actually <laughs> being, being a legitimate thing here, right? So, you know, when I post about stuff about the pandemic and, and the... Um, fear narratives that they're ramping back up again. 
that has nothing to do with a political view. I don't give an F who the president is. I, 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 I don't, right? I was in my day pro-Trump. Um, I have since be, be decided to be pro um, just humanity at this point. I'm not pro anybody for any sort of governing type system. I'm not pro government is basically what it is because government means there is a controlling system. That means we have decided we need to be governed by something superior outside of us, right? Because that's literally what we think God is because that's literally how we've been programmed is that is superior and outside of us and it's governing us. It, it is us, we are it. And I say it because it's not a he or she, it is an energy. <laughs> so me saying it about God is not being um, derogatory by any means. It's, it's recognizing that God is an energy. God consciousness is an energy and we are it. So to me, like, I, I, I don't, I just don't play in, in politics. I don't play in it. I don't, I'll never vote again because I learned, I think we all did, what a joke that was. So it's like, why am I even going to give my energy to this? Like, I already know the system's a fraud, all of it. I already know both political parties are literally in cahoots and go to islands together and do all sorts of disgusting things together. Um, while then on screen, they play their roles so we the people can be at odds with each other. It's 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 so absurd. Like when you start waking up to that, right? Because there's a lot of people that are awake to the to the COVID bullshit and, and awake to all these things, but like still actually believe that if we have a new president, like that life's gonna get better. I'm sorry, we're in the middle of a, a massive human evolution. Life's not gonna get better in the sense of like what you're perceiving to be better, right? Like the system isn't gonna fix this shit. The system created this shit. <laughs> so this is me being real about my perspective of how things are playing out, how I'm using my discernment, my intuition, my love to be able to navigate all of this chaos and recognize, wow, there's more fear paradigms that we're being controlled by. So when I post about that on my you know, um, social media sites, it's not to, it's not, um, it's not coming from a political anything, <laughs> but a lot of people think it is, right? Because again, all of these sort of fights have been categorized into political parties. Don't you guys see that? Everything that's been used to create division, um, blue lives, uh, blue. Black Lives Matter, that whole debacle, that whole facade created by, again, all of the same people that create all of these things, right? What did that do? That created more of a divide with law enforcement and and, and um, Blacks and Hispanics and just like, but it, it that narrative never had anything to do with any of that. It literally was just to spark more divide. It's all it was quite honestly, all of those, all of these narratives are literally to just spark divide. And it's, it's amazing to me how we just eat it up like so easily. But I also know in studying the human behavior as I have been my myself, really, it, it's, it's part of the programming without sounding like a program. I feel like I sound like a program every time I talk about programming because it's like, oh my God, there's another program. But it it is, it's everything when you really start to go, holy shit, that's a program in me. That's a program in me. Wow, I really am kind of like an AI. I'm like AI. I don't want to feel emotions. Well, only like the happy ones, but only on my own terms and only for as long as I, as, as, as I want to feel them, right? Like, let me turn down my happy. That's another time we do it had this conversation with somebody in coaching last week. Not only do we hide our negative emotions, because again, we wouldn't want to show people that we're broken. We have to pretend like we have it all fucking together. We have it all figured out because we're so strong and stoic. It's wild. Um, but then we also, on the flip side to that, we'll, we'll also like hide our happiness. Or we'll hide our joy, especially if, we perceive people um, in our surroundings not to be in that same state. So it's almost like this weird thing that we do, like, 
oh, I don't want to be too happy right now because like they're not. And like my happiness might just trigger that even more. Or like, again, what is it that's holding me back? It's fucking fear still. And at the end of the fucking day, it's still the energy of fear that's holding back being real about how we feel. So we even do it with the positive emotions. I know for me, like, um, if I'm with people that are like, I don't even like to like even categorize people as positive and negative people anymore because I even think that that's, um, because, you know, I mean, if we're saying people are negative, maybe they're just being real about how they feel. Maybe they're just in a very low vibration and that's the only way they know how to express themselves, right? Well, then that's the only way they know how to express themselves. Can't, can't fault them for it. But I know for me, whenever I've been in, in settings where like, it seems to be like a collective negativity or just this energy of like everything that's wrong with the world, all of the bad, like sort of this perseverating on the darkness in a way, right? When it's like this round and round, I sometimes have a hard time being the positive one, even though energetically that's what I'm feeling, what I'm thinking at that time. It's like, oh God. Oh, so now I'm just going to come in like positive Nancy right now. Well, nobody wants to hear that, right? No, I'm just not going to say anything. So I'm just going to stay here and be quiet. What is that actually, what are you actually doing? You are dimming your light. You are betraying yourself. You are betraying yourself because you're not being real about how you feel about certain situations. You'd rather just let everybody else than step up and be like, yeah, no, I hear what you guys are saying, but you know, how about this? How about this perspective? Or I kind of see it like this, right? No, we don't do that for the most part. Why? Because we're scared. So see how like we're afraid to feel good. We're afraid to feel bad. We're afraid to express how we're feeling. So are you really being authentic? Ask yourself everything I just said to you. Now start to really like observe yourself. Like, holy shit, am I being real right now? Are parents real with their kids? Most of the time, no. Sorry, they're not. Um, and I use this from just my own personal experience. Working with parents, but also being a child and having parents, it's like, um, I feel like parents have this because again, it's a program of the parent to protect. It's it's a program. Parents programmed into parents that they have to protect. <laughs> they're vulnerable. They're young. They're kids. So that form of protection comes in a plethora of ways. But usually parents don't like to um cry in front of their kids or they don't like to they don't like their kids to see them being human to be honest and let me tell you as a human granted I know that's not all I am but when I say as a human I, I'm acknowledging that I'm in a human body right now I'm not denying the fact that I'm in a human experience okay so as a human as a spiritual being in a human body and this is not anything derogatory to my parents but if if they had not protected me so much about like things not always being okay in the house, right? I was a highly empathic individual. I always have been. I could sense things in the house, even though maybe fighting didn't happen in front of me, or maybe I didn't see my mom upset, or I didn't see my dad upset about things. I, I mean, I did, but there was a lot that they sheltered me from, or they thought they did. They didn't know they had a highly intuitive, empathic, psychic child that was fucking feeling everything, right? Um, but I look back at all that and then, you know, the different parents I coach now, I, 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 I hear where everybody's coming from, this need to protect, but like, why can't you just be human for your kids? Because I can tell you that that will help children break out of this pedestal thing that we do with our parents this this thing that we do well I did it with a lot of people we did it with my parents part of the program that my parents know more my parents are um they're older they're more experienced they know more than I do 
got to listen to my parents. My parents have their shit together. They're adults. Holy shit. It's actually the kids that have their shit together. And it's kind of ass backwards, like everything. But, you know, to me, that's one of the most healing things we can actually do. Now, I'm not a parent, step parent. And I have practiced this more with my stepson um, being real, like with him about how I feel about life, about my struggles. Um, I haven't seen him now in God, almost two years, I think, because uh, I went back to the East Coast two years ago. August was two years. But I remember having a conversation with him when I went home because I was like, you know what? I know I'm not a parent, but I'm a step parent. So I'm going to practice what I, what I believe to be a healing way to have a relationship with somebody. So I was very real with him. I even apologized to him for things that I did that at the time I felt were coming from an intention of love and being a, a parent, parental figure in his life, but recognizing it was coming from probably my own insecurities and stuff. And, and I apologized to him, right? Because I'm like, you know, that that goes a long way. And that's what kids need to kids I mean he's he's a grown adult now right but he's in his early 20s um that's what we need though as kids we need to be able to see that our parents are human right that they have emotions that they feel things that you know life can be disappointing sometimes but that it's how we handle those things that make us resilient um, I don't want to say that make us who we are. That's what this whole thing is about, about being authentic. So my friends, start practicing authenticity if you want. And the best way is first recognizing every place that you're not authentic and going, why? Why didn't I just say that? Why didn't I just do that? Or why did I just say that? Oh, because I'm trying to fit in with this little click at work and they're all saying this. So I'm just going to pretend like I agree. Right. It's again, it creeps up in everything. So just like be an observer of where you first can see where am I not being authentic? Where am I holding back my truths, my emotions, my thoughts, my beliefs, my perspectives? Where am I not doing it my way? Because everybody else is telling me to do it this way. That's where you can start to say, oh, wow, I'm not really being that authentic, but that's okay. It's part of my programming. I'm going to have compassion for myself. I'm not going to judge myself for it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to get all beat myself up now, right? I'm going to go, well, okay, whoa, there's the human program. That's what I always say to myself. It's like, I've kind of made it comical now. It's like, oh, wow, there's that human AI. There's the human program and there's the human AI. Holy shit, there it is again, right? And then it's like, it's cool. It's cool. So, um, yeah, maybe next time I'll try to try to be more real. <laughs> right. So this, my friends, is a video of me being real at this now moment in this illusionary space and time. And take whatever you want from this, discard whatever you want from this. But if nothing else, just be the love. Right. Because that you want to talk about love. Love is authenticity because again, to me, they're like, they're one in the same. When I really connect with the energies, it's like love is authenticity at its highest vibration. That is what it is. And authenticity is love to be the love. Love you.